Hi guys, hope you're doing great. Our today's question is the longest palindromic substring question, a very famous question on lead code and a medium difficulty level problem. The question says, given a string S, find the longest palindromic substring in S. You may assume that the maximum length of S is 1000. So two things to notice here, palindromic, which means uh, a string that reads the same when being read from the start to the end or from the end to the start, right? And substring means it is a contiguous sequence of characters picked from the string S, right? So basically you cannot pick on any characters and form a substring, form a basically a, a string. It has to be a continuous sequence of characters, right? For example, B, A, B, A, D, um, B, A, B here is the palindrome because this substring when read from the start or the end, it reads the same. And similarly here, B, B is the palindromic substring, right? So in these two examples, you can see that the first one, B, A, B is of odd length and the second one, B, B is of even length, right? So it means that we need to have a solution that is able to capture not just even but also odd length substrings. So before we think about the solution let's have a look at the various approaches that we have figured out till now for strings and um, pause the video think for a moment and get back. All right so I think um, here one or more pointers approach seems to be suitable um, however, we would have to cater it very well to fit the problem, but essentially we would be uh, traveling through the string and, and trying to identify uh, the longest palindromic substring. So let's see how we can do that. I think a brute force solution would be to, to just find out all the possible substrings of this string and then um, for each substring, iterate them again and find out if it is a palindrome. So I think uh, we would have to do that n square uh, to find all the substrings and then multiply it by n to find if it is a palindrome or not. So that gives us an n cube solution, which is not very good. So let's think about what we can do. So um, if we use pointers and if we, if we start from every character of the string, right? So we basically need to make it the center or assume that it is the center of a possible palindrome, right? And, and move towards both the directions from that character, right? Um, and see till where it is a palindrome and capture that length, okay? Capture that length and then do that for all the characters and then find out which is the maximum length substring, right? Now here, since we have to also return the substring, not just the length, we'll also have to capture the index of this substring so that uh, at the end, we are able to reproduce that substring from the given string S and uh, hence provide the answer. The only catch here is that uh, since it could excuse me, since it could be um, even length or odd length. So for every character, we have to treat that character as the center and that character plus the next character as the center so that we are not only taking care of the um, odd length, but also the even length substrings. So I guess once we start implementing, the solution would be more clear. Um, okay. So uh, we would need, first of all, length, right? Um, we would need a start where we would capture the start and end of our answer, right? And we would also need two lengths so that one will be for the odd and one will be for the even. So let's just call them length one and length two. Okay. okay, that's all for our variables. Now, 
um, yeah before that some base cases so let's just uh, check if the string is null or if it has no characters it's like a bl blank string or it has just one character in all the cases we just need to return whatever it is right just return that back so we'll just do that so if sorry okay so if s is not equal to null okay and s dot length is less than equal to one right then just return yes that's it right okay so now uh, let's just start traversing through the string character by character okay right okay so length one we'll just be creating uh, a method to just expand around center okay uh, and we'll be giving it the string and i and i so what we're going to be doing is that uh, we don't want to create two separate methods, one to handle uh, substrings that are starting from a single character and one to handle which have their center with two characters, right? So what we'll do is that we'll use the same method, give it two um, indexes, but in one case we'll pass the same index and in the other case we'll pass i and i plus one so that we are taking care of cases like bab and bb both, okay? And similarly, length 2 equals to expand around center s, comma i, comma i plus 1. Hmm. Okay. So, um, what's wrong? Okay. Sorry about that. And then out of this, right? So for from every character, we could have either of them more, right? One would be more. So we'll just find that. So what we'll do is just do a max, take a max out of both of them. Okay. And then we want to keep a track of not only the maximum substring that we have seen so far, but also the, the start and the end index of that particular substring, right? So instead of just maintaining a max, what we'll do is we'll check is my length, right? <clears throat> is it greater than end minus start, right? So if the current length is more than n minus start, it means I have a bigger substring, right? So I want to update my end and my start. So what I'll do is that taking care of the way indexes behave, I'll just simply do, yeah. So length is the total length of the string and I was my center, right? So using the length, and I that I know, I will find out the start. So basically from the length, I'll divide um, I, right? So what I'm, I'm going to do is that from length, or rather, since, since we want to find I, which would be lesser than the whole length, correct? What we'll do is, that from i, let's subtract. So basically, it should be length by 2. 
considering this is the center, but given the indexes are zero based, what we try to do is that we just do ln minus one divided by two. That, that's the half, right? And the end just goes on to become i plus length by two. Because i is here, this is my whole string. So start would be half of length minus i, right? And then uh, half of the length plus i would be my end. Uh, I'm, I, I hope I'm making this clear. Um, so we just update start and end, right? And then this is the for loop and we just return s dot substring of, we just have to do a start and end plus one because, because of the nature of the substring method. So whenever you're stuck with things like this, uh, we always need to like just run it through an example. Think of an example in your mind. Uh, run it through that. Uh, assume values for length for i and see if this formula is working fine. We'll do that, but let's before that implement this method, public um, expand around center, right? So this returns an integer. This is pretty simple. We just have to go on checking till where the string is a palindrome, right? So let's just take i and i and j. Okay. So um, <clears throat> what we need to do is that we just have to do a while loop and say that while Okay, string s. So I would be starting from like my i would be going towards the left and my j would be going towards the right. So my extreme cases for i would be that it should not go below zero. And my extreme case for j would be that it should not exceed the length of s, right? So what I do is that while my i is greater than or equal to maximum, that's what I can allow to zero and j is less than s dot length, right? And s dot character at i is equal to s dot character at j. So as long as this is true, right? Um, I have a palindrome. So I'll just do an I minus minus, let's move it, and J plus plus, let's move it too. Okay. And once this is done, right, um, I just have to return. And what, what shall I return from here would be, I would say, the length, right? So we're going to return the length. So it would be because j is incremented, right? So the values at which i and j are, these characters don't match. And that's why it has come out of this while loop, right? So we are one index ahead of till where we had a palindrome. And that's why what we'll be doing is that we'll be doing j minus 1 and minus i is what we return. That should give us the length of the substring. All right. So... That's it. So let's say B, A, B, A, D, right? Let's assume that this is not B, A, B, A, D. It is B, A, B, A, B. And we get um, our I is 0, 1, 2. That is B, 2. Okay, so I is 2. And the length of palindrome that we'll get is 5, right? So the length would be 5. So let's just see. Um, our start should be 0 according to this formula. <clears throat> so 2 minus 5 minus 1, that is 4 by 2. So 2 minus 2 gives us 0, which is good. And then 2 plus, <clears throat> sorry, 2 plus 5 by 2, which is 2 again, uh, gives us 4, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's the index of B, right? 
So um, that's a way you can verify the formulas. Um, let's see if this runs. Okay, that is an accepted solution because this is also um, a palindromic substring with the same length. Let's try to submit this. Okay, great. So talking about the time complexity, this solution is an O of n square solution, better than the brute force solution, which is O of n cube. And uh, the space complexity is O of 1 because we are not using any collection or any extra space to store the string or any of its substrings. So I hope you guys find this video helpful. Please like, share, and subscribe. Keep coding and take you guys.